We've retrieved the core memory. It should reveal the location of their homework, right? That's right, Fox. Indeed, the time to face the Aperoid Queen has come. Uh -huh. The source of all Aperoid will, the Queen herself, makes her vile nest on their home planet. As long as the Queen exists, <laughs> oh my God, they all the say bored. will continue to uh -huh. <laughs> Understood. We're on our way. Fox. Hmm? I'm sensing a distress call from Planet Saria. Saria? From Tricky? I'm not sure. But I sense cries of agony. Prince Tricky? In agony, you say? Good heavens. Fox! Look at that! It's horrible! What have they done to Saria's dinosaurs? <laughs> Aperoidation? That's Aperoid a bit of a weird hatchers. word. This must be how they multiply. If we can destroy those hatchers, we might just have a chance. Okay, let's move. Crystal and I will head down to the surface. Falco and Slippy, the skies are yours. A mission together at last. Oh, uh, yeah. What are you two doing? Let's go! See what I mean about Crystal? All she talks about, I swear to God. Anyway, welcome to mission six. And this mission will be... Returning to Planet Saria, a.k.a. Dinosaur Planet. Got it! Fox, you know all about the might gauge, right? The gauge shows enemy strength in the skies of Soria. Watch the gauge and go to the skies when necessary. Yep, the might gauge is back just like it was in Mission 3. Damn, Slippy. What crawled up your cloaca and died? I'm pretty sure these temples here, I'm not supposed to go in with the tank, you're supposed to go in on foot, but hell, the tank weapon, the tank cannon's such a good weapon. So I might as well go squeeze my tank inside these ancient temples, why not? So, this is the typical kind of mission destroy all the aperoid hatches, and if the might gauge gets too high, get into the R wing and take out the flying enemies, because even though you left the flying enemies to. Falco and Slippy, they are completely incompetent and won't destroy anything. Destruction of Hatcher confirmed. Nicely done, Fox. Take out the remaining targets. This level has quite a lot of enemies, so it's actually pretty easy to build up your combo count. This level also introduces a new enemy. These flying flower petal thingy majigs. These are actually bombs, they'll slowly fly towards you, and if they get too close, they'll explode and do a load of damage, so you want to blow them up before they have a chance to do that. This is Slippy! We've discovered new enemies up here! Oh, beautiful They won't get away with this! I actually really like this level. I know when we were on Katina, I kind of ragged on about these all-range levels being kind of a pain, or like, you know, being a bit mediocre, but this one's quite nice. I like this one for some reason. Well, for a few reasons, actually. Uh, number one, there are quite a lot of enemies, so you can rack up a lot of points, and that actually feels nice. You know, being able to mount a combo actually does... I don't know, it's, it's quite a simple concept, but it does feel satisfying building up a long combo count, so I like that. Another thing is that this terrain is actually really well suited for the Landmaster. It actually feels nice driving the Landmaster around in this. Another thing I like about this level is the soundtrack. I absolutely love this track, it's probably my favourite track in the whole of the Star Fox Assault soundtrack. In fact, I'll go on to say that Star Fox Assault has probably one of my favourite soundtracks ever. Um, I know most of the songs in the game are basically orchestrated versions of the songs from Star Fox 64, but actually it's all the original songs that were composed specifically for this game which I really like. You know, I prefer those much more than the remixes from Lilac Wars. And honestly, in my opinion, um, you know, the Star Fox 64 game, that had a great soundtrack, but in my opinion, I think Starwing on the snares outdoes it just a bit. Having said that though, you know, while the soundtrack for this game is absolutely fantastic, I feel the sound effects are probably one of the weakest areas of this game. You know, a lot of the sounds they use are really questionable, especially for the R-Wing, they still bother me to this day. It's just like the engine noise of the R-Wing, whenever you do a maneuver, whenever you boost, whenever you do a somersault, you make the engine noise, but it doesn't sound like an engine, it sounds like a hairdryer. It doesn't... I don't know, I guess they were trying to make, like, a unique sounding jet engine. 
you know, all, all, you know, you know, so many spaceships to make the usual spaceship noise, but we wanted our R wings to be unique, and you know, I can kind of see them going with that. I mean, it's the reason why everyone recognises the Tie Fighter. You know, maybe that was the going thing they were going for. I don't know, but it just doesn't sound that good. And it's like when you get hit in an R wing, when you get hit in an R wing, you don't really sound like you've been hit. It's not like this clunk noise that, like, if you got hit by a bullet or a missile or a laser beam. It's this grinding noise, it's like this noise that sounds like, I don't know, it sounds like Darth Vader breathing. It, it's just not quite right. And there are some sound effects I like, the explosion sound effects I like, some of the weapons sound good. The, I mean, the sniper rifle sounds like shit, but you know, the machine gun sounds alright, the explosions sound good. But yeah, I just, I just like the way this level plays. I mean, I know I ragged on about all range missions, but this one's pretty good. Um, I mean... It's, I guess it's just like, it's because it's so varied. You have wide open areas, you have the land, you can fight in the sky, and you have these interior levels which are designed for the on foot sections, and it actually uses them quite well, it's quite varied. And I really do like the way you can hop in and out of the different vehicles on the go, and it does give you a lot of, it, I don't know, it's so dynamic. And to that, to that end, I think it works quite well, at least this mission does. I don't know why it doesn't work quite so well for the other missions. I guess maybe this is the one that gives you both the R-Wing and the Landmaster at the same time? Oh, that's a new type of enemy. Those little balls, uh, you probably saw them earlier, but if they get close to you, they uncurl and lunge at you. They're like little tiny morph balls, and they attack you uh, when you get close to them. And this room's a nice touch as well. It's designed to look like one of the Krizoa temples in Star Fox Adventures. I haven't really talked about that, actually. Yeah, I mean, Planet Saria is Dinosaur Planet. It's, I guess it's a nice throwback to the previous game for those who played that. Um, there's not really any dinosaurs around. There are some dead dinosaurs. They've undergone the process of aperoidation, as we saw in the beginning briefing. Aperoidation. It sounds like it's one of those words that a five-year-old would come up with, you know? It's like Dalekanium. Remember Dalekanium? The Daleks in Manhattan and all that. Christ. I mean, it's like, you know, if you're gonna make up a word, you might as well make it a cool word, you know? If we save Soria, you'll get a chance to see See, it's been a year since the events of Star Fox Adventures. Were they expecting Tricky to have grown that much? How much is one year in dinosaur years? I don't know. But yeah, Star Fox Adventures. Um, you know, I played it, and it's an okay game. You know, it gets a lot of flack for not being a Star Fox game. You know, uh, and quite rightly, it should get flack for that. I mean, the fact that Nintendo decided to waltz on in on Rare and you know decide to change their entire game more or less, in taking a completely unique game and then changing it to a franchise that has really nothing to do with the established art style backstory or anything. It's one of those weird things, it's like, Nintendo, what were you thinking, you know? And despite all the criticism it gets, it's still a decent game, you know, I liked it. It had, it had some great graphics for one thing, and actually while I'm on that subject, I really like the way this level looks, you know, when we were at Katina, if you remember, I was saying how, you know, the graphics are much worse than they were compared to the first level, but this one's alright, you know, when you compare this level to, say, I don't know, Katina or the Sagasso Space Station, you know, this, this level looks really nice, it's pretty, and it actually is convincing of an actual environment, this one's actually kind of believable, I mean, like, okay, compare this to the Sargasso Space Station. And it's got all this, like, sort of generic sci-fi stuff, it's got, you know, the, the glowing walls and whatever, it's got lights and stuff, but it, it doesn't really say it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a space station, it doesn't really say to me that it's a place where criminals would hang out. Uh, and Katina, you know, that doesn't feel like a military base, it's got kind of elements of a military base in there, I guess. It's got, like, a central tower, like, maybe a control tower or something, but there's no, like, parked tanks or anything. I know that's kind of secondary in a Star Fox game, you know, believable environments, ho ho, but, you know, this one, this one's actually kind of pleasing to the eye, and, I don't, you know, they may be reusing Rare's art assets, I don't know, but they've done a really nice job with the environment here, and I really like it. I don't know why I love this level so much more than the other levels, it just feels, it just feels much nicer, and if more levels, if all range missions were kind of like this, I wouldn't mind them so much, you know? And I guess one of the other problems with all range missions is that, you know, you can kind of get lost in them, especially with large levels like Vecina, 
which are huge, but don't have too much detail in it. Planet Saria, you know, while it has a lot of things like interior areas, caves, and, you know, the whole outside bit, it's not actually very big, so, okay, maybe it might take you a couple of tries to figure out that some of the Aperoid hatches are hiding inside caves, but, you know, it's a small area, so you won't really get lost. I, I guess I've played this a few times, so I know the best route to get, like, the best combos, but still, you know, it, it's a very nicely designed level. And I still prefer on-rail sections, but I still like what they did here. I know what they were trying to go for. They, they didn't want to just make another Star Fox 64, as much as the fans say they want that. You know, they wanted to make something unique, they wanted to make something slightly different. So they designed this whole on-foot section, they designed it so that you could, you know, hop in and out of different vehicles on the go. And okay, they weren't really successful, not always anyway. And, you know, despite its many flaws, I find it admirable that at least they tried to make something unique and different. You know, that's more than I can say for a certain other series. Uh, and by that I mean New Super Mario Brothers. I mean, you know, it's a shame that it didn't, you know, it didn't really work, it didn't really win people over, but hell, I, I respect them for doing it. And uh, we've nearly destroyed all the Aperoid hatches. Uh, what's strange though is that this is one of two levels that don't have a boss. Which is a shame, because they really could have done something by making a boss fight here. I mean, what if there was an Aperoid infected dinosaur? Remember the red eyes from Star Fox Adventures? How about an Aperoid infected crazed T Rex? Oh hell, remember Warpstone from Star Fox Adventures? That giant stone guy who talks like Shrek and goes, Nobody ever brings me gifts anymore! You could have had like a crazed, possessed version of him and he could go around punching things. That would be awesome. Now let's find Tricky. Looks like most of the Aperoids have retreated. And there you have it. That's Planet Dinosaur saved from the Aperoids, I guess. Looks like almost all the Aperoids have been wiped out. Yep, all the Aperoids in one square kilometer. They're all wiped out. Fox! Tricky! Fox! Crystal! I knew you'd come! Thank you so much! Tricky! So heavy! Ouch! <laughs> so, Fox, you're here to fight him, right? Well, I'm going with you! Please, no! I appreciate it, but you're needed here, old pal. Besides, I'm leaving Saria in your care. Remember, you're the leader here now, Tricky. Okay. Hmm. I'll do it! Yeah, yeah! I'll take care of things here, so you two can come back on your honeymoon! What? What are you, nuts? We aren't... we're not yet... Uh... Not yet? Uh... I mean... I mean... This isn't a conversation for children! You said you weren't gonna treat me like a kid anymore! Then stop acting like one! You're just mad because you don't want to talk about it! Alright, that's enough, boys. See you guys next time on Mission 7. Okay, General. But what about a weapon? Why couldn't I bring my blaster? It's always the same with you, Fox. Shoot first, ask questions later. This mission is about saving the planet, not blowing it up. It requires a different tactic. Try using your head. <laughs>